Okay. Hi, everyone. Today we'll continue the same uh, session of uh, business intelligence for accounting. Last time we talked about business intelligence in general, and it's the same, the stuff we talked about yesterday really can apply to any field. Today we'll take all of that stuff and we apply it to accounting cube. So this special cube, and why is it special? Because one of the dimension is special. Time dimension is like in any other cube. You can have years, quarter, etc. cetera. Uh, locations, Chicago, Cincinnati, blah, blah, blah. All of those is a dimension of geography you could build. Then yesterday we talked about product. This time I replaced it with accounts. And accounts is a special dimension. So let's dive into it and see how we put it in content. And how do we analyze a, a, a accounting cube? Moreover, I will show you how we build up a accounting dimension, a cube with Python in Django. First of all, chart of accounts. Chart of account is really nothing but a list of accounts that we have in the financial statements. If we have, we have a balance sheet, in the balance sheet we have assets, liability, and equity. Please notice, assets has sub-accounts. The truth of the matter, assets, you usually split it at least to current assets and long-term assets. In this one, it doesn't really have that split, but it's usually coming to today. Yesterday, we saw a concept of drill down and roll up. Let me explain here using chart of account. Assets, when I drill down to asset in, when I click on account assets and I'm drilling down, meaning I see the details of how much in every account is. And then when I roll up, I sum up all the accounts and get the total of the total assets. Roll up is looking from the detail to the account that sum up those accounts. And when I drill down, I look at the detail of that account. I will give an example in a second. Let's say another thing, we have revenue. This is really the income statement. I'm gonna make a comment. It's a very, very important comment. And I will talk about it more as we go to the, in today's sessions. Income statement, you can think about it as a sub account of retained earning. Because in the end of the day, the net income, whatever the net income is, it's kind of missing here, but it's, should be already down here. Let's think I should go to the return earning as we saw in the first sessions, first or second session, when we talked about accounting. If I wanted to organize chart of account in the right way, I really should take the income statement and make it as a sub account of return earning. And by the way, return earning should include not only the Income statement should also include dividend because what happened to return earning? Beginning return earning, you add to that the income, the net income, and you subtract dividend, you get the end of the year return earning. So you see already the link, okay? I won't push the envelope too much today, but as we go in, I talk about how we implement it actually using data that we download from the SEC, I will dive into it more. And there's more points to make. But first of all, chart of account, basically you can look at it as a list of all the accounts of the financial statements. That's number one. Usually we tend to give them a number and you can see all the numbers of the assets are within the hundreds. And then when it gets to 400, we jump to the income statement. I usually number them with the higher numbers and I keep more space between them just in case if I need to add another account for any reasons happen or needed, I can edit in the place that I want. And secondly, 
usually we put them in an order. Sometimes I call that the account number, I even give it an order number, just because that's the way I'm ordering them as well. Not only the number is the account number, it's also organized in such a way when I'm sorting it, I will sort the account by the order number and then everything will line up. I will show how I use it in my, in the way we use it in Academy City. Basically, I took the same cube and we can think about that cube now as if we have one dimension for years, meaning we have financial statement for every year. Or we can say, let's say we are a holding company or we are a big company like Google and Google have many companies. Or let's say this company we're talking about, they have subsidiaries. Subsidiaries is really a company that we are holding their shares, okay? So if I have four companies that we're holding their shares, they are all belonging to us, I will have a financial statement to every company. So every layer here is re really representing a company. So let's say the company I have in Chicago, for 2002, I have several accounts. So this layer, really in fact those five numbers, it's really like as if I had only five accounts for 2002 for Chicago. If I wanted to talk about the financial statement of Chicago at 2004, I will look at those five numbers. As we saw yesterday, just applied to the accounting. But let's go and dive into example. So let's look at this example. I just said a second ago, we go over that. And we do the same things as we did with the sales queue. What do we have in the accounting? We have one dimension. This time will be the company. Companies we have in different cities, just this dimension. Time dimension, it's really right here. And the third dimension is chart of account. In the chart of account, and this is really a typo, it should really say account. So we have cash, long-term assets, total assets, liabilities, equity, blah, blah, blah. All of those, and it's go, going to be really long, depends on the size of the company or the type of the company. And that becomes to be another third dimension. So if I'm looking at Chicago, company located in the city of Chicago, so every account, I can have the number for every year. For example, cash. How much was the cash in the company in Chicago for every year? So this is for the first year, second year, third year. How do I know that? Because the city is Chicago is number one. Number one is Chicago. So here we go. And the account 111 refer to cash. 111 is cash and those telling me the years. For the first year, which is 2002, I can see it's here, one is 2002. That means the amount of money the company had in the 2002. For 2003, it's simply number two in the fact table it will be 105, very, very similar. So you say, wow, this is so easy. I can do it for any topic. The answer is yes. But I'm gonna show you how shows the data of, of Apple. And let's look at the, at the, this is for Apple, the financial statements you can tell, you can see here. This is the financials, but say a really interesting feature. This is their balance sheet, okay? And the balance sheet, they present total assets, liabilities, equity. And then you say, well, and when you click on total asset, meaning we are drilling down, I see the detail. And when I click on current assets, I see the detail of current assets. Again, I'm drilling down. I drill down on cash and cash equivalent. I get another account, two accounts. And cash and cash equivalent, in fact, and others probably should say here. And then when I click on that, I see cash and cash equivalent. So is 
the way I showed you the chart of account, this is, doesn't show me this kind of a structure or hierarchy. It's another concept I want you to know, an hierarchy. Is this is the right way to build it up? Or how should I really build up this dimension so I get this wonderful feature? And this really is the right way to do it. Let's go dive in more. Okay, let's look at their uh, equity. Let's look at their equity. You see stockholders equity, you click on it, capital stock in its common stock and it stopped. They have returned earning. They really did it like the conventional way. And business intelligence, as I said before, under the retained earning should have ha been there the whole income statement. It really should say under the retained earning net income. And when I click on return on net income, it should really show me revenue minus expenses. And then I can dive in more and more and more and see all the detail of the income side. So this is really designed nicely for investor, not really a business intelligence person. And this is a good way to do it. But when we're building up the cube, we will build up the right way. When we present it, we can present the balance sheets this way and then present the income statement like they did here. You see, total revenue, the truth of the matter, really, it should have, really have been the net income, the last line here, the net income should really go inside the balance sheets. That's the right way to build up the chart of account. We get to that. After this, uh, after the next session, we will have another session to show how you really build it up in the right way using data from the SEC. Uh, for now, this is good presentation. A regular person expecting it to look that way, a regular person expecting net in income statement to be shown separately from the balance sheet. But we as a professional computer scientist for accounting, we do want to build up the chart of accounts in the right way. That's one comment. And then I will, when I get to how to implement it in Django, I will add one more thing and show you how you do it. Because this is really not a trivial way to make it because a regular table, like a table like that, you cannot really do it. This one doesn't have the hierarchy that I'm expecting. And there's many ways you can make an hierarchy. And one thinks, I will give it an example, you know what? I'll give an example. I can build up an hierarchy for the companies. I have companies, let's say I have many subsidiaries. And let's say I have even two or three in the state of Illinois. So this table should really be modified. Let me modify it. I think this is really worth. I'll put it on the side so I will not destroy whatever already we have. I will add another column here. And I have a city in which the company is located and I will write here the state. Chicago is in Illinois. But let's say I had another, another company in Illinois. So usually what you will do, you will simply add another one. I renumber those one again. And you just simply type Illinois again. And let's say I have a, a, a let's say I will take uh, Elmhurst. Okay. And I have a subsidiary there, or Peoria. Caterpillar is sitting in Peoria. Now you really have the state, and under the state, you have two subsidiaries. Okay, you have two subsidiaries. I hope I spelled it correctly. Okay, but I have two subsidiaries. So this is really kind of an hierarchy. 
Illinois and another two cities. Uh, let's uh, let's add here. This is with the Texas, and in Texas, let's say I'll just make another one for Texas, and let's say Houston. And this is the way that you can really build up like an hierarchy. The hierarchy is state and city. And then when you, you drill down, you are really seeing the detail, how much I sell from in the state of Chicago and Hamburg together. Then I can sum them up. It's called all up. And if I want to see the detail, I drill down. Here we have a time dimension. If I had quarterly data, I would just add here a quarter. And then I would have another column. And for every year, I will kind of extend it. Really, this one will change to, I would have that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And how that would go? I'll have 2002 how many times? Anybody? This one should be how many times? Four times, because I have quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four. And then I will continue, 2003, etc. That's why I'm extending my dimension just take that one and sorry, and extend it to include quarterly level. By the way, what I'm doing now has a name, by the way. When I'm, what I'm really doing is going from granularity of a year to a quarter. I'll get into more detail. So I'm really collecting data in the level of a quarter if, I, if I'm expanding the time dimension. So this one will be 204, 204, et cetera. This is really the usual way that you can do it. You can go even deeper. Every quarter can have monthlies. So you will add another, you will add another kind of, you can add another kind of, and you can have the monthlies. And then you have to break it down more because every quarter has four months. And you can go even deeper if you want to collect data on a daily. But usually in accounting, you have financial statements for a quarter. So usually you don't go down more than a quarter. And you have annual report, which is a yearly. This one required a special treatment. I will show it in a minute. So you have something to look for. My favorite type. And really, if you know how to do it, you can really use the trick for a lot of other things. And I will explain that when we do that. So let's move on to the next part. Let's see, how do we implement the same cube we talked about in Django? Finally, and you know me, I love parties. You know, it's nice to have a lot of theory, but if you don't know how to do it, what's the point? We, in Django, we know if we want to make a table, we inherit from others that model. By the way, this is a, a mixing that I created, really nothing special. It just allow me that if I want to delete all the record and truncate command, so I just add this mix in and this table can have a function now called truncate and it will clean up the whole data. Why truncate is important? I can use delete and then delete all each record. I will be slow, first of all. Secondly, it doesn't release the memory and truncate does both of them. It deletes everything in one time, release the memory. So it's a good habit to do that. So this is just a simple thing. So you can even ignore it. This is the most important. This is out of the box from Django. And we have one dimension and see how I name it. The reason I named it XBRL is because the data we're going eventually to use, and we're going to populate this table, this uh, cube from data that coming from the SEC. Companies have to, to file using XBRL. 
So I just call it X barrier. So we know the data coming from there. We have three dimension and we have one fact table. I like to put the word fact in the fact dimension. You don't really have to call it company. You can just call it fact or you can call it even fact accounting. That's what you do, whatever, as long as you know. And this is really a good way to, to know that this is the dimension. So let's look at the first one. What do we have in a dimension? We must have a primary key. And we know Django, if I don't specify a primary key, it will add a primary key. Is that right? Anybody find an error here? And maybe I will talk a little bit and I want you guys to spot an error. And when I go there and I will show you the code itself, not as a slide, we'll fix it. If you, if you look, we have, first of all, we have main C code, meaning, and then we have a C code, meaning for each company, it belongs to a special sub-industry. And that sub-industry belong to a general industry. So we usually put kind of an hierarchy of the industry code and the main code. And we also put a name, that's the name of the main industry. And I will give an example in a minute. And we have a sub industry. Let me show you an example and how is that really done in Django and how we did it in Academy City, implemented this kind of a structure. But I will make a comment as I show that to you. And then I will expect you also to catch an error here because the index, pay attention to what's supposed to be the primary key. And tell me if you see an error. This is by the way, the way I implemented this in Django, this is exactly the way you see it. And in a second we will see if there is a, by the way here the error is already removed. I intentionally left it there and I wanted to see if you can guys spot the error. Anybody see? In fact, if you see here, the main C code, it's an integer, small integer, because we don't have that many, less than 32,000. So a small integer will do the job. That's a description of it. So those are really going together. Then we have the industry, sub-industry, okay, with the descriptions. I can write here with exchange that companies traded, but that's detail. As if you remember, I said that a dimension should have a primary key. I don't see the primary key here. And I can have a lot of adjectives. All of those are adjectives. In fact, everything here is adjectives. Somebody can say the ticker is unique. It could be the primary key, but then you guys know you took the framework for software engineering. That's not a good idea to have a primary key to be a character. I have the CIK code. I can use that one. That could be yours. It's also supposed to be unique. But believe it or not, sometimes company do change the CI code, CIK code. And why should I count on that one? I don't see the primary key here. You guys agree? So let's go back to the slide. Here somebody have left as if the main C code is a primary key. It is not. And that's why it was changed to just a positive small integer. It is not a primary key. So that's error number one. So that has to be fixed. And that's really what's fixed here. You see, I'm getting into the data. Where is the primary key? You should know in Django, if you don't specify the primary key, the Django will create automatically a primary key. And that will be an integer. An integer is a good primary key. We have C code. Let me show how is really that being used in real life. Here's an application and I can choose a company. When I choose a company, it will automatically show me, let's say I'm choosing 3M. 3M and that's give me immediately the financial statement. We'll get to this application. But this is really the sub-industry that it belongs to. And this sub-industry can have several companies. Every company belongs to a sub-industry which belongs to a major industry. Let me show it maybe in another way. 
in Academy City. So we know where we're heading to. So that would be really a practical session, more than theory. So if we go and look at the, you can see here that we have a table for industries and many industries. So many industries, we have about 10, agriculture, mining, construction, et cetera, et cetera. Each one of those have industries, okay? Have specific industries. So you can tell in this, in this one that, that let's maybe kind of sort it by the main. So those companies, those in the sub industries belonging to the main industries, et cetera. And that's really an hierarchy. You can think about it as an hierarchy and that can really function basically as a dimension. And the dimension really, you can think about it as if in every sub, we have the companies under the sub. So how should be really a table as a dimension look like? And this is a good one. But one more thing, and that's what I want to clarify. And that's very important when you're building up a dimension versus to the way we studied so far when we build up an application. Pay attention, I have here deemed company and here I have a company table and this table, I have an industry and I have a foreign key going to the industry. Just the way we learned normalization. And this one, it's connected to the industry. And let's go to that one. And this one, it's with a foreign key. Okay, it has a foreign key going to the main table, just the way we learn in the rules of normalizations. But when we do business intelligence, no, 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 no. We break the rules of normalization. We do denormalization because we want the cube to work very fast. We don't want that link. And secondly, this table considered as a small one. So we do denormalizations. So we repeat ourselves in this column. We repeat ourselves several times, something we avoid when we build the transactions applications. Okay, that's called denormalization. And in a cube, when you prepare a dimension, you try not to do a link to the parents table, I should say. If you do that, it's known as a snowflake style. It slow it down a little bit. If you have a big dimension, that might slow down the cube and there is no point. So this is the way we usually do. We have a primary key generated by Python automatically or Java, I should say. And then we have the whole hierarchy of main industry, sub industry and the company. I can have more adjectives like the ticker, CIK, and then the name of the company, of course, because that's the way I want to show it in the report. Now let's move from the company dimension. Let's go to the time dimension. This one, it's a very simple one. Again, of course, we have a primary key generated automatically, but we made a very simple hierarchy with a year and a quarter. Why we have a quarter? because we're gonna collect data also on a quarterly basis. And we, if we collect data on a quarterly basis, we can roll up and see how the yearly data generated from the quarterly. I said something that is really not true for accounting cube, very dangerous sentence. It's true for most of the cubes but the sentence that I just said now, it is not true for an accounting cube. And I will get back to that in a second, promise. But remember, I will repeat my sentence. In a roll up, if it was a sales cube and I have several stores and I want to know how much I sold in a specific city in all the stores, I will roll up 
I will add up all the stores. I will know how much I sold in that city. That's not true for accounting. If I want to know total cash in a specific company for a specific year, it is not sure to add the cash in the statements of the quarterly statement. And I will get back to that, okay? It is not true. Okay, and I will expand the discussion on that one. So before we go there and answer the question, keep you in tune, because that's a very important, that's why Mac, the accounting queue deserve a session for itself. We have the chart of accounts. Chart of accounts again, we have the account, maybe, maybe just to, I would like to show the account here. Because there is uh, one column that I want to add, and I already added it to the Django application, but I didn't want to show it to you here, and I want to develop. This note is here. I have the account name. The order is really is the number. So whatever this could be the, the the kind of the index, not really. It have to be it, it's theoretically could. Practically don't do it, literally don't. Just put as an account number and put as an adjective and let Django generate the primary key. And then uh, which statement it is, I can write, is it a balance sheet? Is this account belong to the income statement or whatever? And I can give a number to every statement. You see no normalizations in the actual program, I have another table for statements and I do a foreign key from the accounts to the statements. Here, we do denormalizations, one table, no foreign key. Notice, no foreign key in any one of those. But I still claim that I should have something here. And what is that missing here? I go back again to something I really like. Pay attention to this trick. How do we do that trick? How do we do that? You can think about it and you can say, well, cash is an account. Cash and cash equivalent is also an account. And cash belongs to cash and cash equivalent. How will I generate the dim di dimension in such a way that I can have this kind of what is known as a parent's child relationship. Parent in the sense that current asset is the parent of cash and cash equivalent. And cash and cash equivalent is the parents of cash and cash equivalent as a two separate account. Here I have 20 billion and here I have 17 billion. And the two of them are the children of cash and cash equivalent. How do I do that? And here is the answer. You simply add another column. How can I do it in smart way? Let's do it. So open another one and let's make do it. I will just focus on primary key. And let's call this one parent primary key. And that's good really, not only for accounting, could be also for human resources. If you have departments that belong to a, a bigger department and belongs to a bigger, you know, like hierarchy of departments, you can do the same trick. And let's start. And let's say right here account. So let's always total assets. So total assets, Let's give it the number 100. And it doesn't have any parents. It's the top layer. Or you can say it's belong to a balance sheet. Or if you want to add the balance sheet to be an account, but balance sheet is not really an account. So you can leave it just empty or not. And under that, you would like to do current assets. And let's just be a little kind of, let's call it total.
And the total, the account will be, let's call it 110. Who is the parent of total current of total current assets? It is total assets. Therefore, in the parent, I will write a hundred. Meaning, now I know the total current asset belongs or it will roll up to the total asset. That's what it means, parent, child, child. And what is the other child? It's total long term asset. It's also a child, let's call it 120, and it's also a child of 100. 100 refer to the total assets, and that kind of a relationship called parent-child. And when Yao Finance did this kind of a structure, they gave a number probably to total assets to be the top parent, and under this parent, they have two children, those two. And they can make more children under the current assets. They have those two. So how would I do those? In fact, they have four. One, two, three, four. Those two don't have any more children. But this one does have continuing children. And you can do it. And how would you do it? Let's say under the current assets, I'll put cash and cash equivalent. I'll put just inventory just for demonstration purposes only. I don't need to really dive too much to that one, but I will demonstrate. Let's say that I have under the current assets, okay, which is a, the parents is 110 this time. Under the 110, I can start numbering 150 and this one will be account receivable. In addition, I might have inventory. And that's again, that could be a number 160 and that's a child of 110. Who is 110? Kind of spiral, it goes like a spiral. 110 referred to total current asset. So I know those two belong to the total current. If I want to continue with cash and cash equivalent, And cash and cash equivalent also belong to the 110. So that could be account 170. And I want now to put cash and cash equivalent as a separate two account under cash and cash equivalent. So again, the trick is take the 170, put it right here, put it twice, because we have two accounts under that. And one of them gonna be cash, just like they did it in Yahoo. Another one will be cash equivalent. And now I'll just give them a number. I can give them any unique number I want. It will work. So let's give that one 200 and that 200 and then it doesn't really make a difference as long as it's unique. It will be really nice to put it in increasing order and inverse with the order, but don't forget this one. This one allow me now the spiral. This is really beautiful because now I know cash and cash equivalent and maybe I should really call this one cash equivalent and leave this one as a cash and cash equivalent. Meaning let's put one of them would be cash and one of them would be cash equivalent. Those two are summing up to this one. And 170 is the parents of those two accounts, just like the way they did it in Yahoo. Current asset, cash and cash equivalent. If you drill down, you have, in fact, the truth of the matter, they have really three, but I made it short. I skipped one. I just put those two, but you get the idea. Inventory doesn't have any children. Therefore, that will be the end of it. If you look at my example, inventory don't have any children, 160 don't appear here. So if you want to see all the account that have children, you'll find them here. Account that don't have a child, it will not be in the parent. It's not the parents of anyone. So it will not exist there. 
So I know that 110 is a parent. And who, what is 110? It's a total parent asset. That's called parent-child relationship. And that's the way I implemented it right here. I just added one more column. You know, and more advanced, you can really, if you really want to do it right, you should make this one as a foreign key of itself. One more time. I can make the parent to be a foreign key to the primary key of the same table. But that's how we leave it for some other time. For now, we got the idea. The reason you want to do that, just to make sure that nobody will enter data, which is not consistent. But basically, that will do the job. This is the parent, the primary key generated automatically by Python. And that's a beautiful table for accounting. And I can draw, drill down in that kind of hierarchy. We just need the interface that can take this dimension and show it. What is the easiest table, by the way? The easiest table already, it is the last one, which is the fact table. Let's look at the fact table. Remember, we have three dimension tables. So how many, how many columns that going to constitute the foreign key? Three is the number of dimensions we have in the cube. No surprise, we have in the fact table, we have three columns. Each one of them linked to the right table. And finally, we have a measure, we have the amount. This is really the amount that's going to be the total in that account. If it was cash, it's the how much cash the company had in that specific year for that company. If I'm talking about total assets, the amount is supposed to be total assets. But I will get into that a little bit deeper in just a second. There's one more thing that I owe you. And I said that before, and I said that in accounting, the roll up of account not necessarily will be the right answer. I will repeat that. If we have, let me maybe take an example. Let's look at this data of 3M. Here is data of 3M. This is a good example, by the way. There's two data missing. We need to find out why this didn't pull up. But let's just focus on, on the even uh, uh, those years. Uh, let's say 2017, 16, 17, 18, or all those years that we do have data uh, or the balance sheet. Cash and cash equivalent, this is from the balance sheet. If I want to tell you what is the cash of the company in the end of 2018, you will tell me 2 billion at 53. This is in millions, by the way. And if I tell you a wrong question, what is for the three years, you're not gonna add them up. That will be totally wrong. The question is wrong and the answer is wrong. I will repeat the question and why the question is wrong. I cannot really ask what is the total cash and cash equivalent of the company in the last three years. And if you add them up, it would be wrong answer. On the other hand, if I go to the net income or revenue, attack revenue, and then let's look at the revenue for those three years. The question is right and the answer will be right. Let's look at the revenue over those three years. And if I ask, what was the revenue of 3M over those three years? That's a good question. And the answer is the sum of those three. Why? In 2017, they made revenue, they had revenue of 30 billion and something. They have 31 in 2018, 2019, 32. I can add them up. Revenue is a flow information. It's how much revenue I received from selling goods and services. That's correct answer. But pay attention to the balance sheet 
It's an instance. It's really what is the balance in the bank account or equivalent to a bank account that Freeham had in the end of 2018. This is really what is the balance that was in the end of 2017. And if I were to ask what happened between 2017 to 2018, you could have said, could have happened, that really the only thing is that the company started the year with 3 billion, and they, in fact, they withdraw some and they have a little less cash. So adding those two, it's a fundamental error. Now comes to the issue of the cube. Meaning when I'm rolling up, I cannot add years in the balance sheet. All that would be wrong. If I add accounts in the balance sheet, that would be wrong. In the income statement, that would be just fine. It would be also true or correct like the income statement will be about statement of cash flow because it's a flow. It's really what happened during the whole year. If you remember when we did ratio analysis and we said when we have, let's say, current ratio or quick ratio, uh, this is balance sheet account. But if we go and look at uh, inventory turnover, this one we're using account from the income statement and account from the balance sheet. So whatever we use, the inventory we use from the balance sheets, we take the average because we don't know what to take, the last year, the end of the year or the beginning of the year. So we kind of take the average, but from the income statement, what we use here is the cost of goods sold. And cost of goods sold is a flow that the cost of selling the inventory over the whole year. So therefore, we just use that number. So income statement or all the account in the income statements are a flow account. And all the account in the balance sheet, they are instance, one specific point in time. And therefore we cannot aggregate them. So the cube, after all, if we look at the cube now, let's go back to that when in a product, I can roll up. In an account, I cannot roll up. Why? Because in the account, if the accounts are balance sheets, they cannot roll up based on the time. On the other hand, the income statement account, I can roll up across the time dimension quarterly data of revenue sum up to the revenue of the year. I sold such and such the first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter, give me the total revenue of that year. On the other hand, the cash in the balance sheet in the end of the first quarter, you cannot sum that up every quarter to get the balance in the end of the year. The truth of the matter, the cash, in the balance sheet of the fourth quarter, it's exactly the same as the cash of the annual balance. But it's very important to know, you cannot add balance sheet account to roll up. You can do it for income statement, but not for balance sheet. So many times in business intelligence, you write aggregation functions and you wanna use those aggregations along all the dimensions, and now you know you cannot do it that simply, that simple. Analysis server of Microsoft has a very special feature, allow you to specify MDX function that take care of that. And I've done it for several customers of mine in the past. But for you guys, for now, just remember that, that you have to be really careful when you have a dimension like chart of account. And that's why really, I'm making a special video and repeating myself so many times, hopefully it will stick and you'll review that as many times as possible. Thank you guys. We'll see you next time. What are we gonna do next time? Now that we have a, a little clue how we're building it up in Django and how we build it up in the right way, and we're gonna dive into XBRL.
it will look like a totally different topic. To some extent it is, but since it's being used so extensively now, especially when the SEC made its mandatory to be used to file financial statements with the SEC or the annual report and the quarterly report, we should know about XPRL. And the most important things that I would like you to take when we finish it is, is XBR is a cube. This is a mini cube. This is a big cube for a company for a specific year. It's for the industry. Or should we make it? And we will talk a lot about many types of technologies that being used relating to XBR. Looking up. Hope to see you guys. Thank you.